Hi, this is Michael and welcome to another video tutorial. Today I'm going to cover up on how to change the hard disk drive of your notebook for a solid state disk. Um, pretty much we're going to take a notebook or netbook today and we're going to swap the hard disk drive that is in it for a solid state disk. In front of me I've got the Lenovo ThinkPad Edge E135. This will be our sample we are doing the tutorial on. But you can also do this to pretty much any other notebook or netbook because the procedure usually is pretty much the same. Um, before I start up, please um, note that I cannot take any liability to any damages you do, you, uh, you do to your own notebook at home. Um, so this is really you're doing it on yourself and if you do any damage then it was you doing the damage and also please note that before we're going to do anything with the um, components inside or before we actually open the notebook please make sure that you disconnected the power supply of the notebook and also make sure that you're taking the battery of the notebook out which I will do right now just unlock the hatches and take the battery out this goes easy on some notebooks, it goes hard on others, but pretty much if you've got the battery out you're safe. And also before opening the actual maintenance hatch of the notebook, make sure you're elect uh, electrostatically discharged. Usually it's enough to just touch a metal heater or something with your hand and with any instruments you use. But to be really safe, there's some sort of bandages you put around your arm to permanently electrostatically discharge you. Well, these are pretty much the safest way. So if you want to go really, really safe, take one of these, otherwise you should be just fine touching a metal heater. Okay, before I'm opening the actual notebook, I already prepared this notebook for me. I am going to just speak about the advantages of an SSD while I'm taking a look inside or while I'm opening no the notebook. Um, an, SSD has the, whoop, an SSD has the main benefit of being really, really fast. This means that most solid state disks are about 10 times faster than a standard hard drive. So your operating system, for example, Windows 7 boots just within a few seconds and your programs are ready to use within just a few seconds. Um, now you can see I already prepared this notebook. It's pretty much the same for any notebook. There are just some screws at the bottom or wheresoever. You open a hatch and you see the inside of the notebook and you just have to remove this hatch. But there might also be some notebooks that you just can't open. If this is the case, then you're not really able <coughs> sorry, uh, then you're not really able to do anything with a notebook apart from ripping the plastic case apart, which is obviously not what we want to do. But there are also some notebooks where the hard drive, which is over here, um, is placed under the actual keyboard. So you're going to need to remove the keyboard first um, in order to access the hard drive. As I said, it's different for every notebook. So just have a look in your instructions if there's one available or Google where your hard drive is or pretty much just open the maintenance hatch and, may, and, and hope that it's down there. Um, now before I take out my SSD over here, I just bought it. This is the SSD I bought. It's a SanDisk 128GB solid state disk. Um, there are some points you have to look at when replacing hard disks in a notebook with a solid state disk over here. Now this is of course at one point the capacity because if you're buying a one terabyte hard drive for maybe about 80 euros, you're going to find yourself ending up paying also 80 euros for a solid state drive just with the little difference that this only has a tenth, so 128 gigabyte of the storage the one terabyte disk has. So if you're looking forward to buy a um, solid state drive and you have a hard drive in your netbook and you only have one hard drive slot, there are some 17 inch notebooks that have two of these slots, uh, then you can just go ahead and plug this, um, this solid state drive into the other slot, but otherwise if you've got only one hard drive slot you're going to need to replace the, uh, replace the whole hard drive. So you should watch out that you have at least 128 gigabyte of space on your solid state drive because otherwise Windows takes at least 10 to 20 gigabyte and well you can do the calculation on your own so really without at least 128 gigabyte of space it's um, not going to be much fun working with a notebook. Otherwise if you get a second hard drive then you can also take a 64 gigabyte SSD and just install your OS on there and put any files on the other hard drive which has got much more storage but simply is slower. Another benefit of the solid state drive by the way is that it consumes or usually consumes much less power than such a hard drive so it also 
um, enlarges your battery life and that's something you can especially uh, feel in a netbook because they use generally low power consuming um, components on a gaming notebook you're most likely not going to notice much. Um, so as I said apart from the capacity you're also going to need to have a look at how um, how thick so how thick your hard drive or SSD in here can actually be at max. Usually for desktop PCs your hard drive can be pretty thick so I think it's about even over a centimeter or so but especially in, in um, very low profile netbooks um, there are some slim hard drives with uh, that may not be thicker than seven millimeters. So when buying a solid state drive for your netbook or for your notebook, you should have a look that they um, that they are only seven millimeters thick, as in here. I'm not sure whether you can see it. There we go. This is just seven millimeters. Otherwise, just take the hard drive out of your notebook beforehand, measure it, and make sure you get the same thickness. Apart from that, um, as I said. These 128 gigabyte um, solid state disks cost about 80 euros at the moment, so that's pretty much where you'll have to start with replacing such a HDD. Um, and concerning the transfer rate and the power consumption, now if you're having a look at the specs and you're um, at the specifications of these uh, drives and you're a more advanced user, then just have a look at the transfer rates of the individual drives and if possible also benchmarks of these. For example, this is a drive that has relatively um, low transfer rates compared to other SSDs. However, its power consumption is really low with just I think about 0 0.8 watt or something. At least that's what the manufacturer said. So you should um, compare these speeds so fast is not always better, especially in a netbook. So really I'm going to live with the I think 220 megabyte per second um, reading speed instead of taking a 300 megabyte per second reading solid state drive. However, going with much lower power consumption um, compared to the other fast SSD. So this is basically what we'll have to have a look at when buying such a solid state drive. Um, let us keep um, noting, uh, opening the notebook and taking the original hard drive out. Um, I already told you to remove the battery and power supply, so this is done pretty much. Now what we have over here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, um, is the actual hard drive. And over here we've got some sort of sledge. So over this, over here, this is a sledge. And what we're going to need is we're going to remove two screws of, these, of this sledge. Now your sledge and your notebook might look slightly different but the idea is pretty much always the same. So we've got one screw over here and the other one over here and what we're going to do is we're just going to screw the screw out. Now some tweezers might be helpful. Some tweezers might be helpful at points. Just take the screw out. Well, might not be completely loose yet. Take the screw out at both sides okay, I think this one is loose yet already oh, it should be loose, I'm not getting it out yet oh come on Make sure you're taking the screws out if it works of course as you can see it does not work for me at the moment. I'm going to take the screw sideways then let's hope this works out. Oh come on. Ah oh, there we go I think I got it. Now as I said this is always you know a little bit of luck to actually be able to take the screw fully out. Yeah okay so anyways um, I think the screw is out so what I'm going to do should still work otherwise just make sure you unfold uh, unscrew all screws over here and what you're going to be able to do is um, take your fingernails take the sledge and just pull it backwards Okay, over here the screw comes, now I can maybe get it out completely.
Okay, as I said, just take the sledge, pull it completely backwards if there's no screw still blocking me or you or whatsoever. Okay, now this, let me just grab another tool and let me remove this screw because the screw is screwing, out, uh, screwing me up a little bit now. I know that one was horrible. Anyways, um, as I said, make sure there's no electrostatic charge in your tools. Then take the screw and just get it out. Okay, there we go. Perfect. I got the screw. <clears throat> now what you're going to do is just, as I said, take your fingers and pull the sledge here completely back. And what happened at this point was that the contacts of your hard drive, they just plucked, uh, plucked out of um, their holding where they usually are. And they are free over here now. I hope the auto zoom works. Let me just go a little bit back and you might be able to see more. Yeah, there we go. So um, the contacts over here are now plugged out and um, what we're going to do now is we're just going to take out the complete hard drive just with your fingers. Make Try to not touch uh, this, this part of the hard drive. Um, so we we'll just try to somehow get the HDD out and if possible place it on some well, electrostatic paper or something in this case I'm just going to put the hard drive over here on um, the electrostatic foil of the solid state drive these are usually packed in electrostatic foil or anti-electrostatic foil and just um, unscrew the drive out of this sledge You've got a screw over here, over here, and there's a screw at the other side. Just unscrew these and open the sledge. Try to remember which way around the hard drive was, that might make it easier later on. And after you unscrew this, Make sure you don't lose any screws in your PC or in your notebook. You can just take off the sledge and just place the, the hard drive um, Yeah, maybe on the notebook. It shouldn't really be too electrostatic either. Then take out the solid state drive over here. Make sure you install everything the right way around. I'm just thinking. If you're not sure, then just check out the contacts on your notebook over here. I'll just have a look at what is what. Um, so I need to turn the, the um, solid state disk around just to plug it in here. And then just put the SSD back on the sledge. Search for the holes and just put the screws back into the holes. Just um, screw the sledge back on. the sledge back into your notebook just as we removed the hard drive before go. sometimes you need to use very very little bit force to get this in so if you use very little force um, this should work out perfectly but just don't do a really hard job on it and I'll just do as before just put the sledge back in over here make sure it slides back into the port and what you now do is you take the previous screws and just screw these screws back in before you could just take your hard drive and place it on the anti-static foil helps a little bit just as I said take the screws put them back in and just well close the notebook again pretty much and after all after you close the notebook you're all ready to go. You can just reinstall Windows um, because pretty much all of your data is still on this hard drive and it's not plugged in anymore so you're going to need to reinstall Windows and if you've got if you're not sure which solid state disk you should buy 
then there are a couple of other interesting articles on the web otherwise I'm going to put some um, other SSD links or links to SSD directly to Amazon somewhere in the description downwards there it's going to be Amazon links links and um, I'm going to have a list of good solid state disks down there so if you feel like just browsing through them then please feel free to have a look in the description otherwise this was pretty much the job of changing an a or switching an HDD for an SSD it's really not hard it's done as you can see within a few minutes okay we've got 15 now but if you don't screw around with your screws too much then you're just going to end up fine and yeah you should be fine afterwards just make sure as I said that the solid state disk is um, not thicker than the sledge or not thicker than the original hard drive and make sure that you've got a big enough SSD and as soon as you boot up the first time just enjoy the loading speed because it will be so much slower uh, sorry so much faster so much uh, so long for now thank you for watching this tutorial I'm just going to have a little bit of a hard job just putting on all these screws back in um, thank you for watching if you feel like just rate and subscribe I'm not a person that tells everybody to comment, rate, subscribe whatsoever. However, you, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. That's what they are there for. Otherwise, as I said, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day on YouTube and don't waste too much time on it.